Alright, MMA Maniacs, let's do this. Once a week we bring you the mixed martial arts news, we bring you events, we bring you recaps, we bring you all kinds of cool stuff. We are Split Decision, brought to you from the Ruloff Family Inc. Studios. Bueller and Dodge bringing you uh, well, whatever we can, really. You can get us on Spreaker, Stitcher, SoundCloud, of course, uh, iTunes as well. If you subscribe, you won't ever miss an episode, but we want you to go to our official website, which is SplitDecisionMMA.com. Find us on Facebook, give us a like, that is Split Decision MMA Podcast, or if you want to get us on Twitter and Instagram, it's SD underscore MMA. I'm a little thrown off today because we're standing up instead of sitting down, so. Do you feel energized? I feel energized, I feel but like I also. Like, yeah, ready I, to go! I feel completely disorganized, too. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even need energy drinks. Just, yes! You never need energy <laughs> drinks. It probably had the exact opposite effect on you. It'd probably make you stoned. <laughs> <laughs> so we got, uh, obviously we had a UFC last week that we're going to go over. Uh, the Ultimate Fighter that happened this week as well. And uh, some some interesting news. There was a press conference. The world's biggest press conference. The world's biggest press About conference. About nothing. The time is now <laughs> to tell you fucking nothing. The world's, <laughs> the world's biggest fucking letdown. I like, the time is now is the name of the press conference. And the time is now... That we have to let you know we didn't get it done in time yeah. was the exact words out of Dana White's mouth where he said they asked first question who's got the first question what's the big announcement oh you had to have that as the first question um we didn't get it done in time yeah well, I mean <laughs> what do you expect when it's called the time is now and we have a big announcement what do you think the first question is going to be of course it's going to be well what's the big announcement yeah. like this that's probably what they wanted to open with his purple sweater was open enough for me I mean he had a nice purple sweater on was it open no well, it was just... should have opened a little bit more yeah his new name is Dana Barney White <laughs> <laughs> so we had on stage though we had uh, Alexander Gustafson Conor McGregor Leo Machida Anderson Silva Nick Diaz CB Dalloway Dennis Siver Anthony Rumble Johnson Chris Weidman Ronda Rousey John Jones Daniel Cormier, uh, Kat Zingano, and Vitor Belfort. All on the stage. Okay. And half on half, you know. Yeah. Two two tiers of fighters. Um, looks impressive. Yeah, it looks impressive. Poor CB Dalloway got dressed up for nothing. He didn't get a single fucking question. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, if we're playing like one of these things hey, yeah. does not uh-huh. belong here, then it's probably him. <laughs> CB you know? I got one for him now. CB Dalloway. Why did you show up? <laughs> <laughs> I got put in the van. <laughs> they told me to wear this There's suit. There's a bunch of people sitting out there going, who is that guy in the end? The best thing <laughs> is, I, I think actually most people thought he was Nick Diaz's uh, interpreter because he sat right next to him and at one point had to like tell him, hey man, they're not, they're not asking you a question. They're actually asking John Jones. <laughs> that was the only thing I saw CB Dalloway do because I just looked lost. That poor bastard. <laughs> That poor bad. He's on a four fight win streak right now, too. Yeah. Yeah, well. So, and know. then, of course, first question went to Nick Diaz. They asked him about the layoff. He said everything's going good. This is the first time he's had a year off from fighting since he started fighting. Which I didn't really realize that until I started looking at his record that, yeah, he hasn't stopped fighting. He's always, the, you know, dog wants to be in a fight, you know what I yeah. mean? But maybe it'll be good for him mentally. Mentally, I hope so, yeah. And then we they talked about all kinds of stuff. Um, things going on with, obviously, we just had the Mexico event, which we'll get to. So there are a lot of questions from the, the Mexican press. They said they wanted to know when they're coming back, if they're coming back. Dana White said for sure three events in Mexico, um, one of them being they're hoping Kane versus Verdum in June. This is, of course, under the assumption that they don't burn Mexico down before then. Right. Which is... Like happening right now, it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> they just want the president out, man. Not everything. <laughs> they still want the UFC to come back. <laughs> They're like they don't have oil down there because we would have been in there. Yeah, wreck shop already. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently, tryouts are for the uh, Ultimate Latin America Two are right now. So you need to be flying to Mexico if you want to go try out. I, I know you're undefeated. I am undefeated, and I am a New Mexican. So you are I New can't. Mexican. I figured. I thought that's what you I know. should be on the show. What weight class are they doing? Uh, they didn't announce that. That should be your next tattoo is that new logo. You know, the new, new, because you're a new Mexican. A new Mexican. <laughs> um, and then, of course, we got to Anderson Silva, who everybody was tweeting about this. We talked about this. I couldn't tell if it was Tommy Toehold doing an impression of Anderson Silva <laughs> or Anderson Silva was actually talking. Did he say, he really, you say my feet hands? Yes. He no, say, he didn't say feet no, hands. No, and he really stops and laughs and goes, <laughs> <laughs> But what I thought was funny is I text both of you while I'm watching this press conference. I'm like, I can't. I, to me, the funniest thing is Anderson Silva's broken English, but so is Nick Diaz's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because I swear his brain, Nick Diaz's brain's going so fast and he comes out so intelligent, has something really important and funny and great to say. And then it's like the weed smacks him in the back of the head and all of a sudden he's just like. <laughs> and then, you know, homie. Uh, Are you talking about wolf tickets? Uh, yeah. Somebody did. No, Dom, uh, Dominic uh, Robinson. He's yeah. the one who steals the yeah, show. Fallen Angel. He steals the show at the end. We'll get to that. So then we have. Uh, basically, Anderson said he's he's good now. Um, he's excited for back. <laughs> That's an exact quote. I'm excited for back. He went to his he's kids. He's bringing Anderson back. His kids said, Dad, no back. And he said, but 
but I need back. <laughs> I need back. Fight is my life. I need back. And they said, okay, Dad, you happy? You go back. Okay, so Dad. I'm back. I'm excited for back. Daddy got back. Daddy so got back. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we talked about there's going to be seven events in Brazil, at least one pay per view, uh, three to five events in Canada. They're hoping that Roy McDonald will fight in Calgary since it's from his home. We'll see right. if that actually happens. Uh, everybody talked about uh, updates. So we have uh, John Jones says his knee update is going great. He said he's 95% ready. They talked, my favorite was Chris Weidman, though. They asked him how his hand was, and he says, Yeah, uh, I can do everything but punch. <laughs> grappling on fine on, <laughs> grappling on fine on. I can do everything but punch. Like, bro, that's the main thing you need to do. That's yeah. what you do. That's that's your job. <laughs> like, <laughs> <It's punching. laughs> wow. So I don't think you're good. <laughs> but he apparently says he's going to be good and ready to fight Vitor. So, well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's kind of frightening to have to fight Vitor and not be able to punch. Yeah, it's it's a little a little scary. Uh, they're talking that GSP is back and getting into training, and Dana White is confident he will come back, but no other no news than that. No date. No. Who's he going to fight? Just a know. lot of rumors of a 2015 return. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's pretty much his whole press conference was. They asked why Shogun and Anderson Silva aren't fighting each other. They said that uh, they've done that before. They had, obviously we talked about this before with Matt Hughes and Rich Franklin that they weren't in the same weight class. They were still coaches for a season and they fought other people. Right. No opponents for these guys announced, but they are talking soccer stadium, possibly Brazil, for that. Oh finale. My God. And that could be the pay per view that's in Brazil that they're wow. talking about. Uh, they're talking about events in Australia. There's going to be one or two, possibly another one in New Zealand. Of course, you had uh, uh, Ultimate Fighter plans. There's a new Ultimate Fighter Mexico, I think, also outside of the Latin America one. It might be just a Mexico-centered one. Um, there's going to be a new Ultimate Fighter, obviously, Brazil we talked about. And apparently all new, brand new uh, format for the Ultimate Fighter for the United States. Hopefully it's not as fucking horrible as Tough Live that we had two, oh, a God. year ago, two Please years ago. No. Please yeah. no. Uh, but we'll have some sort of new format. It'd be interesting. If I mean, did. we had a new format now. At least this one worked. We were the all-women cast, straw weight, defending a belt. I like that's this cool. format. This format's really cool, but it, all the belts are already tied up. So unless yeah. they're going to ha- open up a new division. Which that's they, not going to happen. Yeah, maybe maybe we'll do another comeback season, though. So what do you call this? That'd be cool. What do you call this this format this time? Soap opera? I mean, yeah, but it's, you know. <laughs> tournament. Estrogen propelled. <laughs> tournament. Tournament, yeah. Yeah, estrogen propelled tournament, I guess. <laughs> there, is, there is a, I mean, we joked about there being a lot of crying on this on this season, but there's a lot of crying on this season. Yeah. Well, it's just like the like the whole bad girls club thing, and I mean, you're fighters. I, I we everybody went in knowing this was going to get catty. Oh yeah, no question. So then, some of my favorite did things did not disappoint on that either. No, no. Not some, at all. some of my favorite things that happened in this this whole press conference is one, we had Conor McGregor still being Conor McGregor, <laughs> calling Cub Swanson ninety five years old, saying Frankie Edgar's old, saying Dennis Sever is, is a Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't quite say he's a Nazi, but he said he's going to defeat him easily. He's going to raise his head, and what he calls. I have it here. Uh, second Ireland. We're just talking about Boston. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of my favorite goals. He's like, yeah, it's Second Ireland. And then uh, I like wait, what you said to me. Like, could you imagine the trash talk between Conor McGregor and Nick Diaz? Oh yeah, someone asked. Fight? They asked literally. They asked Nick, "What do you think of Conor McGregor's fighting style?" Conor, what do you think of, of Nick's? And then <laughs> Nick Diaz picks up the mic first and goes, "Uh, I like it." Sets down the microphone. <laughs> yeah. Conor McGregor picks up his microphone. I like it too. And sets down <laughs> the microphone. That was it. Yeah. Some kind of weird mutual respect that these two have. Yeah. Yeah. They became best friends. Yeah. 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 And then somebody said, I like it because it's the new black. <laughs> you just say, I like it. I like it. I like it. It's, yeah, it's all you have. Well, I mean, it was, Conor McGregor and Nick Diaz don't want to fight each other because they're probably two of the most hated people in the UFC. They love to be they love to be hated and hate to be loved. Yeah, so this Conor McGregor says he's going to take Dennis Saver's head clean off uh, in Ireland number two, and then he's going Jose will be told to fly economy to Ir- to Ireland, <laughs> fight in an eighty thousand seat soccer stadium, and uh, what do you say? I don't know. Break down <laughs> and hand over the belt, which is rightfully mine, or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> be forced to fight play economy over to Ireland oh yeah we're gonna break <laughs> records and he's gonna hand over the belt that's my year plan damn <laughs> uh, and then we had the back and forth between DC and Jones which was kind of funny they don't they're, they're like little kids bro they're like look someone asked if you know if do you think that because everything's died down it's a little bit ways out now from the fight that this right and they're like both of them are like no you know we seriously don't like each other it's still gonna be good people know what happened it's gonna be and <laughs> right before he ends it he goes John Jones goes and still like trying to be like and still champions and still DC picks his mic and goes and new. Sets down his mic. <laughs> John Jones goes really. <laughs> picks up his mic. I'm not gonna say something because I want to make sure he doesn't have the last word. This is pretty much. Like, they, that's literally what DC said. I'm gonna say something so he doesn't have the last word. And they just go back and forth for like a good. Who minute got the half. last word? I think DC. Maybe I, I don't know. Somebody or I think Jones said something about you know Dana's here, so it's not gonna get too crazy or something like that. <laughs> 
would have been better if they just would have put down the mics and started yelling at each other. <laughs> but everyone's just kind of laughing, and then it's like, dude, you guys just shut up, just stop. <laughs> Come on, know. man. Somebody ask another question. <laughs> like, do something. I'm going to start saying that. I just want to start saying, and still. <laughs> and, and just new. walk off. And still. And new. <laughs> you walk off home run right there. And still. <laughs> Done. Um, let's see what else we have. Oh, of course, we had Nick Diaz trolling GSP the whole time as well. They kept asking him. Uh, the, the major question was is that somebody had asked GSP recently what they think about the Nick Diaz-Anderson Silva fight, and he says he thinks it's a mistake for Nick Diaz to go up to 185. So they asked Diaz his opinion about that. <laughs> and uh, he said um, that he, he's like, well, I took the fight, didn't I? George didn't take the fight. <laughs> <laughs> Where you at, George? Seriously, he said, Where you at? He goes, He wants to run his mouth. He goes, When he should have taken the fight, he was scared to take the fight. He's like, uh, But I took the fight. And then he starts going on and on about, I don't like catch weights because I put on weight easy. I want to be someone that can fight in three weight divisions competitively. And maybe I come in light, but my opponent comes in heavy. And then, you know, it's not fair to me. But then I come in heavy, so I don't want to do catch. And I'm like, What the fuck are you talking about, dude? Like, <laughs> you were good when you were taunting GSP. Just stop. <laughs> You're done. Joe Rogan needs to stop giving him alpha brain. <laughs> like, he might need to take alpha brain. <laughs> I don't think alpha brain's probably too much for him, man. I think, seriously, I don't know. Like, his brain, like I said, just moves too fast, and then it just... Whoosh. Could be a crazy movie like Lawnmower Man or something. <laughs> no. Give him alpha brain. <laughs> job. Job. I am job. <laughs> uh, and then we got some fan questions. Oh, we, of course, we had some Twitter questions, which were, they were just all right. Uh, John Agner got to ask those. That was nice. Uh, they asked Rhonda who who wins Tough Twenty. She says she doesn't know, but she, she doesn't watch. But she likes Rose, JoJo, and Carla, and she thinks Rose is the favorite. However, she, she th- Rose is her favorite, but she thinks Carla will win, as it seems that the one fifty five pound or one fifteen pound women's division is striking heavy. Do you guys agree with that? Do you guys see, seem to think that this season is pretty striking heavy? There's been some good striking. I don't know if it's striking heavy because there's been some really good grappling too. Yeah. Who's other than other than uh, Ronda Marcos? Who's Grappling has impressed you. I wouldn't say not necessarily that it's impressive, but a lot, a lot of wrestling takedowns and some really good takedown defense that's been forced into stand up, you know, competitions. Mm-hmm. Obviously in the cage, but we've also seen some pretty good, I think, really good takedowns and the ground struggle. I, I just think, I mean, looking at the semifinals right now, though, you have to, you have to agree, a lot of them are strikers. Other than Randa Marcos, who's obviously very good on the ground, very slick with submissions. You got Carla, who's pretty striking heavy. You got Rose, who's pretty striking heavy. And Joe. JoJo's pretty striking heavy. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, it just it seems like it, that seems to be the speciality. Of the well, the, Not, that means the strikers are winning. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. Is it does seem, I think that maybe that's the point. Because leading, leading up to where we're at right now in the Ultimate Fighter, we've seen we've seen some decent, I think, some decent takedowns, some decent throws, and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, well, no one wants to say wrestling, but definitely grappling. Yeah. Um, but if that's the case, I guess I haven't looked at it that way. And if the strikers are coming in on top, then I wouldn't necessarily say the whole season was striking heavy, but the strikers were winning, obviously. And then the last little bit, they said UFC's working on getting fights in Scotland. So we'll see if that actually happens. Um, Brock Lesnar still under contract with WWE, but is healthy and interested in coming back. Yeah, that's interesting. That was some pretty big news that they're saying that he may come back. With uh, Rampage, maybe. Pa- yeah, ran- that's another thing we'll get to. We have that news story <laughs> a little bit later. Rampage apparently wants- might come back to the UFC. Uh, but the last little bit was the greatest part. Again, we have, uh, what was it, Derek Robinson? Dominic. Dominic Robinson. Dominic Robinson. Uh, also Fallen known as Angel. Fallen Angel. That's his, his nickname. He had the last question. Uh, and he says, first he says, he says, you know, I want to shout out to Nick Diaz. We're here for you, homie. He used to train with Nick Diaz. <laughs> the whole time, Nick's like, yeah, yeah. And like Nick Diaz is like searching for him in the crowd, trying to see if he, can, he couldn't couldn't see him from the stage. And Fallen Angel goes on to ask John Jones a question. Meanwhile, Nick Diaz is still looking for him. Where you at, homie? Where you at? Where you at? I can't see you. Throw your hands up, dog. What up, homie? Throw your hands up. I can't see you, dog. Oh, there you are. Are they cool? Ask your question again because I couldn't see you. And that's what Stevie Dolly had to be like. Yo, he's talking to John Jones. <laughs> Nick's like, oh. But the best part is the whole time when he's like, yo, homie, where you at? I can't see you. I can't. John Jones is like, oh man, this is fun. He starts talking. He's like. I- uh, like keeps getting interrupted by Nick Diaz trying to look for the dude. He's like, "This, oh man, this is funny." Are you done? Are you are you done? Seriously, are you done? You got, are you guys done? Like he got so frustrated that Nick Diaz was ruining his moment because somebody answered him a question, even though Nick Diaz was just confused on what the question was. And Nick Diaz thought the question was directed at him, and it kind of shows like what we've already said about John Jones. Anyway, he's a diva. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's totally a diva. Yeah. yeah, don't don't take my light. See, but see, but obviously it's a good thing that, that C.B. Dalloway was there to stop that that's whole That's what I'm saying. That's the only reason yeah. why I think C.B. Dalloway was there. <laughs> good. So if he wasn't there, who So the question that he asked John Jones, though, I thought was great. He's all, since none of the other reporters had the balls to ask this question, don't you look at Gus and Rumble fighting not just as a fan, but because it's going to knock somebody that's in the top ten that's a contender for your belt that could beat you off so that you don't have to worry about fighting them? 
And he's like, no, uh, <laughs> no, man, I just, I just want to, I just, I'm just, I'm just here for the fans, man. I think it's a great fight for the, I've always wanted to see two top 10 contenders go at it, you know, and not always have to have that, me fight that never somebody. Happens, ever. And my favorite, he's like, no wolf tickets on me, no wolf tickets.com. <laughs> yelling at him, yelling at John Jones. The guy in the audience is? Yeah. Dominique Robinson, Fallen Angel. He's Dude, out of Oakland, California. And then he goes to Dana. He's like, one last question. Dana, you owe me from back in like 2012 some DVDs? <laughs> <laughs> you prom- I met you backstage. Yeah, you promised to autograph them. You, pr- you promised me some WC DVDs and some Dark Ages DVDs back when I fought Anderson's guy and I got ripped off. You even told me I got ripped off, dog. Now you're signing a bunch of losers. He's like, I've already beat them. They're all ducking me, man. They're all ducking me. <laughs> He's like, well, you need to talk to Joe Silver. And you they know? try to take the mic away from him. He's like, no, no, no. Give that man back his mic. <laughs> He's like, yeah, man. He's like, I already fought all these guys. He's like, He's like, look, I will give you $100 because that's what they're worth since you apparently already bought them. <laughs> He's like, and you come see me backstage and we'll work this out. <laughs> really? So yeah. who knows? Maybe this guy will be in the UFC soon. That's interesting, man. <laughs> that's how you do it. Right? You want something, you take it. It was hilarious, man. It was great. So then, yeah, we see our, our schedule. UFC uh, 182, the this first exactly fight of the year. exactly what we said was going to happen last week. First man. fight of the year, we have main event, John Jones, Daniel Cormier, co-main, Donald Cerrone against Miles Jury. That's going down in Vegas January 3rd. UFC Fight Night 59. Fight, right? That would be <laughs> the New Year's card. <laughs> UFC Fight Night 59, January 18th. Conor McGregor against Dennis Siver as the main event going down in Boston, Massachusetts. Co-main, Benson Henderson and Eddie Alvarez. Nice. How do you feel about Conor McGregor, Dennis Siver being the main event over Benson Henderson and Eddie Alvarez? Conor McGregor sells tickets right now, man. Hands down, he said in that press conference, he said, I don't care. They asked him, who, which, out of all these fights, which one would you watch? And he goes, well, being a company man, all of them. <laughs> but let's see who sells the most pay-per-views. Let's see who brings in the most fans. Let's see who sets records and gates. Who does it? He's like, it's going to be my year. I'm going to break every record of the UFC. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Well, UFC on if Fox. If you got Conor McGregor fighting in Boston. Right? I mean, yeah, It's Ireland, too, according yeah. to him. <laughs> not wrong. <laughs> UFC on Fox 14, January 24th. This is the Sweden card. You have Alexander Gustin going up against Anthony Johnson, Dan Henderson against Gegard Mousasi. Then you have UFC 183 pay-per-view January 31st. Anderson Silva versus Nick Diaz. Co-main event just got added. Kevin Gastelum against Tyrone Woodley. And then we have UFC Fight Night 60. This was the big one that they announced as part of this. The time is now. <laughs> Matt Brown against Tariq Safferdine February 14th. Valentine's Day card. That's sweet. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to figure out that main event doesn't make any sense to me, but okay. UFC Fight Night 61, we're going to be in Brazil. And then we have uh, UFC 184. Uh, no, nothing on the Brazil card yet. Uh, UFC 184, main event. Obviously, we have Chris Weidman, Vitor Belfort, Co-Main, Ronda Rousey, Kat Zingano. And then we have just dates. And we have UFC 62, or Fight Night 62, March 7th. UFC 185, March 14th. UFC Fight Night 63, March 21st. UFC Fight Night 64, April 4th. UFC Fight Night 65, April. And this goes on through the entire year. Every freaking Saturday, you're going to see something on Fox, something on Fight Pass. Well, so we got 45 fights lined up. So there's so there's what? There's yeah. seven there's seven weeks where there's nothing. Possibly. <laughs> I don't even know where they're at, though, because it's, yeah, whatever. All right. I'm mean, looking at this. It's, it's Well, there's there's a gap right there. Okay. What, 29th to the Aug- 5th? August 8th to, to the, the 23rd. 23rd. Okay, yeah, we were missing <clears throat> something there. But, I mean, it's just nonstop. But that's kind of, I mean, it's kind of cool to know as a fight fan that there's only seven weeks next year where you're not going to have a fight. Well, there you go. You have one. UFC Fight Night 83, date and site are both TBD announced. Well, okay. Sometime between September 26th and October 3rd, folks. <laughs> <laughs> not a lot of wiggle room there. <laughs> right? <laughs> I think somebody just messed up with their math. So, yeah, UFC released their entire schedule. Again, nothing. And, I can... mean, none of us can hold them to this. No. You told me we were going to have something. It should say card, subject, and area to be determined or uh, to change, not just this is the date and the time. And we'll get somebody on there eventually. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say, the new commercials, if you listen to all the pay-per-view, they, <laughs> card, subject, it's card, very subject, loud. Paid. Card, subject, change. It says yeah. it at the beginning of the commercial and at the end, very <laughs> loudly. It's no longer like a small asterisk on the poster anymore. No. Like, no. It says it above like UFC and what number yeah. it is. <laughs> card, subject, to change, and bold, and then UFC 183. <laughs> <laughs> UFC 183 is called Card, subject, to change? change. <laughs> <laughs> That's the name of all the pay-per-views from now on. <laughs> card, subject, to change. Card, subject, to change, 84. <laughs> 
Vitor Belfort had his first drug test November 1st, and he passed. Dude, awesome. he passed. He Sweet. passed, man. I'm excited for Vitor Belfort. Hopefully, uh... He must have got a pee test for dummies. Yeah, we'll see. Or maybe it's the Jesus. Maybe it's the Jesus. The Jesus. <laughs> Jesus helped him out, man. Uh, at, at the time is now, we had a little bit of backstage. You know, the, the reporters were able to do a little Q&A with some of the fighters. They asked John Jones if he would be interested in a super fight. He said he wants a heavyweight fight, and he wants to fight for Doom. I don't know why he didn't say Kane. Being the champion, but he said he's open to a fight for Verdum. Verdum accepts that fight and said he would take him on any day. That's it. that's also interesting because you would think that he would take uh, Kane because because Kane's out on injury. He doesn't right? have to do that fight. Right? He could be like, yeah, I'd, I'd fight Kane all day <laughs> whenever he comes back after he defends his belt. <laughs> but when he comes back, I'm busy. Yeah, I'll be busy. I got fights of my own, man. I can't take that fight. <laughs> but I would. <laughs> so, I, I mean, what do you think? Do you think John Jones, Verdum? I... Doesn't really doesn't doesn't make it move. For doesn't me. doesn't move for doesn't you. Doesn't make it move. But then again, I mean, Verdum looked really good against Hunt. Yes, he looked really good against Hunt. Yeah. They actually said, let's see, this is John Jones again talking. He says after two more fights, after he defeats uh, Cormier <laughs> and Alexander Gustafson, he will be the greatest of all time. He will be the goat. Come on, and then he will move to heavyweight. It's that's tough. That's tough. It's tough to argue against him. Looking at his record and who he's fought. It's tough to argue against him. It's hard to say that that because he's gonna lose eventually. He's yeah. gonna nobody has anybody. No, nobody's retired and defeated yet. Nope. And so it's kind of hard to say that he's the greatest of all time when you uh, saw. That. Did Frank Shamrock retire undefeated? No. No. Not not no no no. I'm talking about in the UFC when he first walked away. Oh, I think when he left the UFC, he did. Yeah, and he but, and he walked away as champion. Yeah. Because he, he said there was no competition left, and right. later he's come back, and obviously we've seen him lose to Nick Diaz, we've yeah. seen him lose to Kung Lee. Right. I've seen. I'm just talking about when he left the UFC the first time when he said he's retired from fighting because there's no competition. Yeah, well, I, I still, I mean, he still didn't technically retire. All right, there you go. So, I mean, you got somebody like Anderson Silva who had 17 wins in the UFC. He's now got a 15 fight contract. Yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> how do you how do you say that he's not the goat? Right. You know, Anderson everyone Silva, still says he is. Yeah. So, even if he's lost twice to, to Weidman. They still say he's greatest of all time. Well, like I said, Muhammad Ali is considered one of the greatest of all time. He had losses on his record too. Yeah, yeah. This is just because he's you know he's what he's ten in a row or eleven in a row, whatever he is. I don't think it makes him. Necessarily I still would like to point out the Matt Hamill's uh, win over John Jones, <laughs> this is, this is even so, though it's by disqualification. Such a bullshit win. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a terrible black eye on that record. <laughs> Oh. No, not black guy. That's John Jones. Whoa, hold on a second. <laughs> Matt Hamill's a white deaf guy. What's your favorite hockey team? Blackhawks? Black San Hawks? Jose Sharks and Shark. the Blackhawks. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing better than a big black hawk. They're huge. Huge. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, looking at his record, though, it is really hard to argue with him. I mean, he's gone up against, obviously, Shogun and Lyoto and Rashad, Dan Henderson, super, all guys yeah. who had who had the belt at one time. Super impressive resume. Vitor, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I, don't, I don't question that at all. He is... One of the greatest of all time. Yeah. For sure. But he's not the greatest of all time yet. I don't, I don't think he's quite there yet. No. All right. So then we have... Did uh, I see not safe for work picks? Yeah, we'll get oh, to that. I can't wait now. So obviously we had some <laughs> sad news. We talked about this that was going down um, this past week. This happened back in March. I think we even brought this up that this happened. Yeah. Uh, Derek Munson Jr. was a kickboxer under the Roof Sport gym up in Milwaukee. He was in an amateur bout, his first amateur bout. Died due to complications of things that he suffered in the ring. He collapsed in the ring. They got him to a hospital. He died at the hospital. Right. Now it's coming out that the Milwaukee Journal actually did a bunch of investigative reports on. There was a lot of things that went wrong. They actually put together a pretty big video. You got to watch the entire event. After the first round, there's definitely something wrong with him. Yeah. By the second round, and he's coming out to the third, I don't know why he's fighting. Like, he's stumbling around like he's drunk. He doesn't even know he's in a fight at the end of it. No. And then finally he collapses at the end of the third round. Um, and there, at one point there is footage missing from the official... 32 seconds. 32 seconds of footage missing from the official uh, Roof Sport because they film all their events. Yeah. Uh, thing They say they don't know what happened. He's, he goes from standing up in the corner to laying down. Laying down. Corner, yeah. However, a fan was in the audience. They've provided that footage that is included in this little uh, video. <laughs> oh, really? And the fan footage shows uh, as he starts to slump, the coach pushing him up against the ring post, slapping his face, trying to get him to come to, and then he collapses on the ground. Nice. So they were basically, they cut out the footage of the of his corner man slapping around me like, you're still good. You're, you're in this fight. What are you doing? Like... Yeah, so it's not looking good for the Roof Sport Gym. Uh, Rose, 
Uh, they're gonna get. They're gonna get negligence. They're gonna have a lawsuit from negligence. Yeah, it's looking really bad. Rose put up a bunch of things on her Instagram, which blew up on Twitter, which have been all over the place. She's basically saying well, that's one of the reasons her and Pat Berry walked away from the gym is that they didn't feel the gym was. Yes, they learned skills there. They had it. You know, it's not anything. They just felt that it wasn't the gym for them because of some of the things that had happened in the gym. They feel that guys who are amateurs are being put in into pra- training sessions with guys that are pros and they're told to go full force. Like we're talking like people are just learning, wanting to learn kickboxing to work out in or getting put up against a guy who's got pro fights right? in their gym mm-hmm. and that they're constantly being pushed and they're constantly being yelled at. And they're con- I mean, and so some of this is what they call gym <clears throat> culture where, you know, obviously your coaches are there to push you and kind of get you through things. But at the same time, they're trying to wonder if it's part of bullying. It's a big mess right now. Uh, Anthony Pettis says he thinks the real, uh, the real thing will come out, you know, why do they stick around? They trained. She. They even said Rose came and trained with us after the Ultimate Fighter. Why is she just bringing this up now? And look how many fighters they've put into the UFC and other large. Yeah, looking know. looking at uh, the the journal did its own investigative reports because there's obviously nobody keeps track of these things by looking at the amount of fighters that Roof Sport guys go to. They actually have the most withdrawals from fight due to injury before fights happen. So they're saying that they are more injury prone in their gym than any other gym that's putting guys through the UFC. Possibly from what we're reading from pushing Possi- too hard. Possibly, yeah. So again, it's it's very sad and it's it's very strange what's going on. Like I said, I, I can put up the video, I guess we won't release the link on our Facebook. You can it, kind of judge for yourself. If everything that, that's coming out right now, like the because it's not just Rose, it's other people that are... Oh yeah, there's multiple. Too. I mean, former uh, Eric Schaefer, Eric the Red Schaefer, fought in the UFC for many yeah. years. He was their original grappling coach because he, he went there to learn and he quit because of these things. He yeah. said he did not feel comfortable with the gym. He felt that Duke Rufus was uh, a liar and a bad person. His, his quotes, you know what I mean, saying that he just didn't like the way he, he trained and li- like the way he, he taught guys um, how to do things, and so he had to walk away. A lot of these things are coming out. So it's, I've, I've seen gyms. I've seen gyms tune people up to where they, cause they don't want them to come back. Yeah, you know I've asked. I, mean? I actually asked Albert. He trains over at the AKA affiliate gym, and I, you know, is this part of gym culture? Is this something that happens all the time? He goes, yeah, yes, and no. He goes. I've heard stories from other gyms, though. I mean, that's just, it is what it is. You know, some. some I think in a, one aspect, like it's they, weird. They they want to push their fighters, but they want their fighters to fight. They yeah. want them to be able to compete. But yeah, because that gains no, more notoriety for the gym and brings them exactly. more people, brings them more money, right? Yeah. So that's that aspect is stupid. But tuning guys up who come in are just shitheads and they don't want them to come back. Right. That's not uncommon <clears> at all. <throat> no. And I and I, I mean, one of my friends got tuned up at a, at a local gym that I'm not going to name, but. And I was like, "Well, you're kind of a dick, and you kind of deserve." But that it. goes, <laughs> but but that 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 goes in all sports, though. Oh, that yeah. Happens. oh yeah, yeah. You, you got somebody who, who thinks you're going to come in and, and just mouth off to everybody and do whatever they want. They're going to get checked real quick. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter if it's basketball, football, whatever. Yeah. You know? but, if, but if the other stuff is true about that, Jim, then fuck Duke Rufus, dude. I mean, you got it's pretty crazy how some of the stuff's coming out. Yeah, it's, you got to take care of your people. That's your investment, and you're going to let somebody just like you're going to push them to the point of where they're going to die in the ring. Yeah, and you know? and if you watch the thing that was scary for me to watch the video is the the medical examiner that's supposed to be watching the fight is on his cell phone. Yeah. For oh yeah. Oh, over fifty yeah. percent of the fight, he's just like texting, Facebooking, Instagram, whatever the hell he's doing on his phone. He just like looks up, looks at the guy in the corner. And he's like, uh, looks like the corner's guy. He's good. All right, I'll go back to my phone. Like- I'll, I'll <laughs> say this, man. I, I mean, it's very, very sad for the family. It's super sad yeah. for the family. But uh, you, not to take this out of context, but I really fucking hope you guys get a lot of money, like <laughs> a lot of fucking money. Yeah. I know it won't replace the loss of a loved one, but you motherfuckers should be living in a goddamn mansion when this is yeah, all. Yeah, the said video enough. is pretty, in my opinion, pretty cut and dry. Yeah, watching you, what you should. You should have some of Duke Rufus's money. You should have some of that, <laughs> that fucking medical examiner's money. You should have some of that ref's money. The ref, you should, yeah. You should have fucking some of everybody's money by the time this is said and done, because that's some bullshit. So, like I said, we'll put up the article, which has the videos in it. You can watch, kind of judge for yourselves. But, again, it's, it is kind of sad something like this is happening in, in our world of uh, MMA and, and fight sports. Uh, Rampage recently tweeted that, uh, <laughs> very, very interesting. He said, just a thought. I've learned a big lesson uh, in life and in business. Sometimes you should just stay with the devil you know at UFC. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all still suck. But you suck less than these motherfuckers. <laughs> Which seems like uh, to be what it is. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's interesting. They asked Dana White what he thought. He said he, he'd welcome him back. Has no problems welcoming Rampage. Bags never had a problem with Rampage. He never understood why Rampage had a problem with him. Really? Yeah. Wow. Is this what? It, does this have to do with him finding out how much they paid Pico? Who? The wrestler, the the kid that they just signed. Bellator, uh, you don't know about that? No, I didn't see that. Oh, yeah, Wrestling Phenom. It, it, it was such a bad deal for the UFC that Lorenzo supposedly told Dana to get out of his office. He was wondering why the UFC didn't sign this kid. Huh. 
This is going to be like the he's like the American Conor McGregor. He's he's a, wow. a high rated American I, I wrestler. Know, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pico. He was just signed by Bellator. Very interesting. interesting. So I think that's that's what it's about. I think he found out that Pico got some uh, you know more a pretty money good, than he should. Yeah, a pretty good amount of money. Uh, and then we have Luke Rockhold signed a new eight fight deal. I'm excited to see Luke Rockhold get a longer a bigger, his, his contract was coming up on exploration. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now he's uh, got an eight fight deal. He just submitted somebody that's never been submitted. Yeah. Yeah. Let's I, I do think, it. I think uh, I, I see him in the near future go for a title. I really I, do. Yeah, I think, I think uh, Luke Rockhold's going to have a belt at some point. Think so? I, I think. I really do. do you? He's yeah. going to take out Whiteman? I think at some point he's going to have a belt. I really do. That's all right. So we have uh, Chris Cyborg recently went on the AMA uh, Underground. So what advice would you give to young women getting started as an MMA fighter today? She answered a little tongue-in-cheekly, and she said, uh, make a bunch of photo shoots, spend more time on Instagram and Facebook than training. <laughs> Is that just directed at this chick? No, though? just in general, just at, just any of the young. And so, uh, for some reason, Ultimate Fighter 20 it fighter. it seems like this is like directed at Felice a- Herrig. A- a- yeah, exactly. <laughs> Angela Magna tweeted uh, some of these pictures and said that uh, she took her advice to heart, and she put up, <laughs> I don't know. Is that a look? She's not even wearing nothing, and she got a little muffin top. Yeah, is, is that a muffin top, or is that where the abs cut in? But that ass, though, a little cheeky. I, dad, yeah, dead ass, though. <laughs> dead ass, though. I and I don't understand. See, this goes back to like what I think we and then, me and you talked about end, it last week. She is, tweets all these photos, and at the very end, she says, "Thank you, Chris Cyborg, for the advice on how to become more popular." I skipped training, and uploaded these ass pics. It works, doesn't it? <laughs> Did she get more followers? I, right, I, maybe. I think it's like you said. It was at Felice. But this girl is the one that picked it up. She's like, oh, okay. Oh, well, this, this, is is what doing. Doing. <laughs> this is what I got to do. This is what I got to do. Uh, and then we have, okay, so coming up this weekend, we have Metamorris 5. We're going to have uh, Sakuraba versus Gracie. Henzo against uh, Sakuraba. Great. Rory McDonald against JT Torres. Uh, and Vinny Miguelis. I like this. This was uh, pretty funny that they put this up. Vinny Miguelis' opponent, uh, which was, what's his name? I don't, I don't know. The guy who gave himself his own black belt. Oh, uh, Kevin. Kevin, right? Yeah. The guy who was Spencer Pratt's yeah, yeah, yeah. for a while. Kevin, fucking what? I can't remember his damn last name. He was that pull- was his opponent in Metamorphs? Yeah, remember we were talking about this. That was okay. such a, ma- a mismatch. However, then he had to pull out due to injury. He had some weird blood clots going on in his system, so they couldn't fight, couldn't, couldn't grapple. Uh, the Gracies offered $10,000 to A, someone that will come fight Vinny Miguelis, and B, submit him. As a bounty on Vinny McAllis. Oh, they fuck. They don't like him. So does TBD stand for to be discovered? To be discovered, <laughs> yes. Uh, to be determined. And apparently he does have an opponent. I don't know how well he's going to do. We'll see how it's going to happen. Was, I mean, he was when he was on the Ultimate Fighter and he was saying that it was better than, than Big Nog at grappling. Oh, yeah. They, people um, got very upset. People got very upset. But then people who were in the world of jiu-jitsu in the know were like, well, he, he is. Yeah. He, actually, he actually is. I think I actually have the, his opponent's name. They just released it. Zach? Nope. Not that one. We have... Mathenis Diniz? Never heard of him. <laughs> so, yeah, $10,000 reward if, if this guy, he's a star brown, ba- brown belt pupil of Marcelo Garcia. He's a brown belt? Yep. He's fucked. Are you serious? <laughs> yep. Oh, he's fucked. There's no way. I, I mean, mean Vin- Vinny is the 2011 Abu Dhabi champion. Don't get me wrong. I mean, yeah, BJ Penn went down and schooled a bunch of black belts. Double bronze, black belt, but. double bronze at Abu Dhabi when he left. Uh, he's beat Chris Weidman. He's beat Gunnar Nelson. He's beat Fabrice Over Doom. Uh, he is the current Titan Fighting Championships light heavyweight champion. M1 Global light heavyweight champion. Was in the UFC. Was in the Ultimate Fighter. Very well known in the in the in the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu world. Interesting. I'm waiting for a, a kid named Keenan to make it into the Metamorphs. Yeah, <laughs> he's no. There's, there's a kid named Keenan who's really good as a brown belt now. Like my son looks up to him. All he's, right. We were watching him use a blue belt, and he's just on a tear now. He's going you know overseas to the worlds and, and uh, sweet everything. So if you see a kid named Keenan pop up on on the Metamorphs, let me know. All right, I'll keep an eye out for. I can't remember it. his last name though. So uh, before we move on to Ultimate Fight Night, Cub Swanson versus Frankie Edgar, we have two events to talk about. We have the Ultimate Fighter and we have UFC 180. What do you want to talk about first? Let's just go Ultimate Fighter. Ultimate Fighter, it's on up. All right, so we had some drama go down. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have been watching, but it's been really boring. I mean, nothing. They don't even talk about it, each other. There's, like, no gossip. Right. Nobody yeah, fucking whatever. cries. It's, like, it's, not a, it's not at all what we thought it would be. Not bitch, at all what we... Bitch, uh, bitch, bitch, <laughs> bitch. 
bitch. They are fucking mean, though, dude. They're These getting girls mean. Are mean. They're, They're vicious. Mean girls. <laughs> mean girls. They really are. The, like you got guys in the I house. I got two words for you. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody likes you. <laughs> God, it's, they're just they're they're just mean. Yeah, they're just mean. Like when the the do, one, do don't get me a, wrong. Do you have a different take on Carla and Felice now? Uh, I mean they were kind of catty to begin with. Yeah, <laughs> but it's that one chick, and I can't remember her name. She she doesn't live in America. She lives in, does she live in Thailand? Oh yeah, yeah. When she was like yelling at Heather Joe, like don't get me wrong, nobody likes Heather. Was Heather Joe Clark yeah. right? Nobody likes her anyway. But when she was yelling at her about being in the in the tub. She's like, fuck, these girls are just hella mean. It's cocky McDickfuck. Cocky Mc, she's yelling at cocky McDickfuck <laughs> about, about using the ice tub, and it's just escalated from there. Yeah, it gets a little crazy. It gets That's, a little crazy. And we had our coach's challenge. What did you think of the trivia? I thought it was awesome. I thought, I swear to God, you know Felice wanted to say that, you know, it's good that Anthony's, and she's all athletic. <laughs> <laughs> and you know she wanted to say, like, good looking or sexy or whatever, but she was like, yeah, mm, athletic. <laughs> because Anthony Pettis, I don't. He got like four questions, maybe. No, they both had six going into the last round. Maybe. Well, I mean, from what we saw, <laughs> yeah. We, okay, they both had six go before. No, way before that, it was eighteen hundred to six hundred going into the last round when they had to do the the sudden death. Right. But and when they were at six hundred to six hundred, it started out where each question was only like fifty points, and then they jumped to a hundred points. That's how Pettis got. And that's up. where Pettis got his. Yeah, day. he got his tie <laughs> until he lost horribly. <laughs> I don't understand guys who can be in this game and then not watch fights. But I like how Gil was like, I don't really watch anything, and then knew every single question. Right. Uh, so it was it was interesting interesting to watch. And then we I had- was you know what I was pissed off about? I'll tell you this, man. I was pissed off that they didn't give us all the answers because some of that shit I didn't know, and I was like, I don't know. <laughs> so or you like, want to? Yeah. yeah so or you- like I threw out an answer, and I was like, I'm pretty sure it's. And then they didn't answer, and I was like, Well, I don't know if I'm right now. You should have been googling it. I should have been googling no, it. No, wasn't. You should know it. You shouldn't, <laughs> shouldn't have to Google it, Joey. I, I love knew every question. It, no, no, I don't know it. Every question <laughs> I had it. The first or second before they hey, said it. You're the, the first stat man. You're the say, data miner. I say the first or the second time you watched it. <laughs> the second time you went through an A state. He was yeah. like, yeah, yeah, what? Well, I was looking around. People were like, man, he's like that guy in Jeopardy. <laughs> like, yep. Did you catch the early? I showing? watched the early showing. And yeah. I caught it. <laughs> then I came over your house and watched this one. I was out on put some money down on it. Oh, I like it. how Gil won though. Gil. Do I just turn around and look and be like, yeah, I'll take potent potables. Yeah. It's uh. <laughs> just give the answer and they'd be like he didn't even see the question <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gil, Gil's win was slick dude yeah because he didn't have to risk it yeah, I love it yeah Man. how much did you wager nothing <laughs> didn't need to didn't need to. He, had to he had to wager everything just to tie yep yeah so there you smart go. <laughs> and then we had our fight Ronda Marcos against Felice Herrig Ronda Marcos is don't a beast blink. on the ground man don't blink beast on the ground yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, Her I thought, grappling was I thought when really she took well. out Tisha Torres, uh, I'm sure we could go back and, and listen if we had to, but I'm pretty sure, pat myself on the back, I, th- I think I said when she got past Tisha Torres, I was like, this chick's going to win it. Yeah, well, past- I, think, I think as you said, yeah, you're like, okay, I'm picking her to win then. Because yeah. she took out the number three, she was ranked 16, she's yeah. winning. Yeah, she's, I, I figured yeah. she's going to win. And I mean, unless we don't know anything, obviously, yeah. but I mean, damn, if she gets past Tisha Torres, who was ranked two or three or whatever, and then she takes out Felice Herrick that quick. Yeah, With, like, I mean, that that that... Submission uh, modified armbar was very very sneaky, very very quick. And then, and then Ronda didn't even pick her though, right? When they were saying who do you think's going to win, Ronda didn't say anything about her, right? Yeah, hmm. but I think Torres gives it up in tough talk. Somebody says that she may have leaked some information. She may have answered a question wrong in tough talk. So who? Uh, Tisha Torres. Yeah, Tisha Torres may have. Yeah, or Ronda or Carla Espinosa because Carla Espinosa was there instead of Felice Herrig to talk about this episode. Really? Th- yeah. Why? So maybe because it was there a- was drama between Carla. And- so who were the two girls on right after? Was it, it was Rana Marcos via Skype uh-huh. and Carla, who is the number one. The number one. So team. then it's Carla. I think the Carla let, let it go. Let it go. Who wins? Yeah. What did What do they think she said? Just uh, there was some question. You know, how Karen Bryan is. She's always digging. And then there was a question about the the final matchup. And I think that she kind of leaked that she might be the final matchup. Rana and her. Yeah. Be interesting because they said you know they've already asked you know. How it's gonna go? Like it's gonna. I don't, be I'm sick of talking to these girls because they always fuck us up, man. <laughs> <laughs> They're all so bubbly. You're and just happy. mad about the Beck because Beck really had us. She to sold the, us. She, she yeah. sold us. I thought, right. I thought she had it in the bag. But even talking to Felice two times now, she's been super cheery, and it's like, but you lost. But you lost <laughs> pretty badly too. <laughs> it's not badly. She just didn't want her arm broke. Yeah, it's true. Well, quickly. Yeah, faster than she should have. <laughs> that's for sure. UFC 180 turned out to be uh, a pretty damn good. 
event. Actually, I mean, we, I don't even have this up here. I don't even know why I don't even have. We also had the Bellator event happen at the same time, and we had World Series of Fighting happen at the same I time. I only went and watched. We had the, the three Bellator sets of fights for three shitty ass fucking cards that we all were shitting on. <laughs> it turned out to be one of the greatest mass giants oh, yeah. MMA nights that I've ever seen. Like it was, there were some yeah. actually really good fights. Well, they were, yes, there were some because there was twenty four fucking <laughs> fights. You better be, there better be some good fights if you got that many fights. I mean, you had Tito and and Bonner. Uh, you know, looking like two old guys still trying to fight, oh, go yeah. at it for it's three. Like, it's like watching your dad fight a neighbor. <laughs> yeah, dude, there's three rounds. It was done like, after the first. Still winging them, so? still winging them. It was them. done after the like, first. You know I, mean? I don't know, I was laughing. I'm like, man, this is like 4th of July when Did anybody and else neighbor get drunk think and fight. that Bellator looked a little WWE? Oh, yeah. I think I, I, think I texted you guys oh, yeah. this. It looked like yeah. WWE to me. Like, they had the ramp they had, like, at one point, they had the sexy nurses walk out with the guy whose nickname was The Doctor. Right. And they had, like, their own Viginettes little thing playing in the background with their, you know, theme music. It Very old school. UFC used to do this, too. UFC 40 did this with Tito. He came out with the Flames. Oh, I remember came Kimo out coming Biscuit. out with the fucking cross. And yeah, everything. yeah, you know, yeah. and then we had uh, Strike Force. They were able to walk down the ramp, you know. You had, King uh, Mo's entrances are yeah, always ridiculous. come out all crazy, this crown. Shit. That seems like, and that's Scott Coker, though. He loves that shit. He loves the showmanship. Yeah. So I yeah, think but that's they, something we can they see. They need to bring back the affliction, like where they had the live band. The they live band Megadeth play. playing. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why they went broke. <laughs> No, it was Megadeth, bro. But now he's got... <laughs> that, Megadeth didn't make nobody go, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's why he's got Viacom money now. Scott Coker can be like, I got money, bitches! I can spit it on whatever I want. Look at this new ramp I got! <laughs> so what are we going to talk Are we going to talk about World Series? Are we going to talk about... We can talk about it all. I mean, we can talk about Bellator since we're talking about it. We had, obviously, like I said... Tito won his fight his yeah. by split decision. Did his, his, you know, typical flip off. And flip it off, which he got fined for. Did yeah. he really? Yeah, they broke. They, they have the new uh, MMA viewing record right now. Very good for them. Do they really? Yeah. Wow. For viewership, they, they they broke ratings. It was very good. Because uh, a bunch of cheap asses didn't yeah. want to pay for pay per view. Yeah. That's period. Hell that's yeah. That's all it was. Straight up, that's all it was. But I'd, it's all right. I'd rather pay for quality. I don't, and just like the Manhoff fight did not disappoint. Oh, he kicked the shit out of that guy for the first for the first shilling, baby. Yeah, shilling comes back and shilling knocks him out. Yeah, the Nestle T knockout. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> I watched that fight in like in double time because I was fast forwarding to the main event and I was like, oh shit. Oh yeah, that was quick. All right, <laughs> I, I love those kind of knockouts where you hit the guy and then you just walk around until he falls. Yeah, the walk off home runs. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're perfect. Oh, he'll hit, has he hit the ground yet? Has he? Hit? It, it, there he is. That, is he gonna? Oh, <laughs> King Mo won his fight. What's that? The King, King Mo. Mo won his fight. Yeah, yeah. Right. decisively. Couldn't remember. Like I said, I watched it in double time trying to get to the main event. <laughs> and then World Series of Fighting happened. We have uh, David Branch keeps his title over Yushin Okami. That was a good fight. Was Yushin Okami just boring and tried to lay out on the whole time? No, he just did some stand-up. Yeah, yeah they, they, they boxed for a little while. Yeah, they boxed, they as much as Okami could. They clinched. <laughs> you know, he likes to be in the clinch, you know? do right. the dirty boxing kind of thing. Yeah. It was all right. It wasn't too bad. And then, I mean, the whole, in my opinion, the, all the fights on Fox Sports 1 for uh, Ultimate Fighter Mexico, even though I know a single fucking fighter on there except for Jessica I, uh, actually were really good fighters. And, <laughs> and they put on a Jessica I and Leslie Ear? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Did you see the follow up to that though? Yeah, the split open one. No, the no. The, so we, she, Jessica, I bust Leslie Smith's ear open. We all yeah. see, we see the blood splatter. Have you seen the ten foot blood blood splatter? The, the two guys. Oh no. Oh my god, dude. Yeah. It's Quentin Tarantino. I saw, I saw uh. it on, uh, uh, on the underground news today, but I haven't clicked no, on it. It's, on, it's could, on Middle Easy. You know what? We'll okay. we'll find it after the show and we'll post it up. So on I Facebook. posted immediately though. Someone on ESPN. So, it's so gross. It, <laughs> it got the audience, dude. I shit you not. It got the audience. <laughs> Is it like Stand by Me? Everybody just starts puking on each other. <laughs> Maybe I don't know, but they all have AIDS now. <laughs> <laughs> you can't have AIDS if you're fighting. We know this. It was probably some underground shit show. I have no idea. <laughs> but, but I mean, just see, like I said, Leslie, I man, once she saw the bleeding of the ear, she just went after it. She went after it. And just kept hitting it. And just kept hitting it until it exploded. And like I said, the ESPN photo that I put up on our Facebook of the high res and just like droplets <laughs> flying in the air is like a beautiful photo. Beautiful <laughs> photo. And then you have the backstage. But it's a bloody mess. The backstage one where it's completely open and you yeah. see nothing but like a empty shell of an ear. It looks like Sakuraba's when it fell off his head. Yeah. That was great. <laughs> I like that. Um, My favorite part about that whole thing is Sakuraba is, is he literally at the end has to pick up the microphone and he goes, um, I'm sorry my ear fell off. <laughs> In his interview, post fight interview, I'm sorry I lost. My ear fell off. They had to stop the fight. <laughs> yeah. To Japanese, to everybody in the audience. Like, that guy, dude. I love him. I would love to sit down and just talk to him. Yes. You know? I'm glad that Mick Foley, he tweeted Leslie. Because remember, he yes, lost his he ear. He lost his ear in a wrestling in match. Wrestling he got match. stuck in, a, in between two ropes and they twisted. <laughs> Is that how he lost his ear? Yeah. 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 In no Japan. He, he saw it gets better. Yeah. And she responded and he said, what? <laughs> <laughs> 
Talking about good here. <laughs> all, all the fights were really good. I, I was actually pretty happy with the fights. Um, I, I mean, what, what else is there to say? We have uh, Hector Hector Urbina over Edgar Garcia, submission guillotine, round one. Augusto Montano over Chris Heatherly, TKO knees, round one. Ricardo Lamas taking out Dennis Bermudez with a guillotine, slick guillotine, too, round one. Uh, Kevin Gastelum over Jake Ellenberger, rear naked choke, round one. Kevin Gastelum really, really uh, proving his worth. Man. Proving his worth. Like I said, now he's getting a co-main event at a yeah, pay-per-view. Yep. Again, he's he's pushing I was, forward. I was completely wrong on that. And uh, Fabricio Redoom taking out Mark Hunt, round two. <laughs> Mark Hunt... Did really good on the ground in that first round. He actually got out of a triangle. Yeah. He got out of another, like an arm bar. That's, but that's Verdum's fault for trying to triangle no neck. You know, you don't do that. <laughs> it's true. It's a wrong submission to He go was for. actually hit, landing on the feet pretty damn well. Mm-hmm. Come out of that second round. He even, like, he later in his post fight interview says, I was already tired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy because if you take 55, 56, and 180, yeah. the main cards, I think you only had two decisions out yeah. of like 20 fights. Yeah. Uh, the, the the knees were legit, and Mark Hunt obviously didn't see those comments. He hit, he hit it with no, that, that. he did see it. <laughs> he saw it. He just couldn't do any shit. <laughs> ah! it's like, it's like he got a real close up of him. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is like he, he caught the flying knee. He fell down. He got hammer fisted. Hammer fisted. And it was like in a weird position where, and you could right. tell like he's trying to like he push. fucking de turtled. My favorite thing is he's trying to push for new. I'm like, damn it, get off, get off of me. Quit it. Yeah. Quit it. Like he's not getting hurt. He's no, just he's quit not it. getting hurt. And he's like stretching his leg out like he's got a weird <laughs> itch. Like he's doing a no, half he was, bicycle off. Like I don't know what he was well, doing. Well, later he admitted he was knocked out. He said he was tired. Well, because people were complaining that the, it was an early stoppage. Early. And he's like, people, I was knocked out. He he he, he said got, it looked like he got bullied on the ground. Like yeah, and then he and then you know he got you know obviously they gave it over to him. You could tell he's frustrated. He slams his fist on the ground, that, gets yeah. up, little head sad. You know, wouldn't able to think Jesus. <laughs> 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 I've been beat up like that before though, man. I got my ass kicked in a drive in a gravel driver one time, and this kid who he like he got he was a bigger dude. He got on back of me and started punching the back of my head to where like my face was bouncing off the gravel but his hands were so fat that the punches didn't hurt <laughs> but I basically said like pillows the gravel yeah. the gravel was the bad part the gravel hurt and I was like okay Richard okay you win can you stop stop punching me stop now because I can't do anything it doesn't hurt but I, like you win and that's kind of like what Mark Hunt looked like yeah like, okay come on stop dude. punching me stop punching okay. you I caught me I'm on my up. back yeah, yeah. <laughs> one guy I was impressed was Gabriel uh, Benitez over Humberto Brown that, that standing guillotine was crazy Oh, that was yeah. That was the first fight on the. He pillars, caught yeah. him like this, like it was. I don't know how to explain that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like this, people. It's like this. Are you seeing this? I'm going to put this up to the microphone. Can you see it? It's like this. Find that on YouTube. I'm sure you can. Uh, it was it was a standing guillotine choke. It was, it was pretty pretty nasty. A yeah, good weekend of fights. Good times. Good weekend of fights. And then we come to UFC Fight Night. What is this? 57. Is that what 57. Said? Yeah. 57 live on Fox Sports One this Saturday, starting yeah. off on. Fight pass. We have Juan Manuel Puig going up against Don Ho Choi. All right. I like Choi in this fight. He's basically Korean Zombie 2.0. I like his record. He likes to come forward. He's aggressive. He's got good good trips. He's wild. Uh, Puig is a former 155er. He's got heavy handed, but he's only got these like really basic punch kick combos that are really predictable. Does he have T Rex arms? Kinda. Uh, yeah. I- I'm gonna be taking uh, the Korean on this one. I'm with you. And then Paige Van Zant going up against Kyleen Coran. Uh, Paige Van Zant, remember, she trains at Alpha Male. She was supposed to be on the Ultimate Fighter. She's only 19. Oh, 20? 20 now, right? 20 now, yep. She was not able to go on the Ultimate Fighter because she's not allowed to drink, and that's a big part of the show, which we haven't really seen a lot of drinking on the show. But not enough. I think just, we need to see more. Yeah, unless it's behind-the-scenes footage that, you know, those producers are keeping for themselves. I think that we need, we need to see <laughs> no, two I, things more. We need to see more drinking and more hot tub time. If we can make <laughs> this happen. I think they awesome. thought that they were going to be able to put alcohol in the mix, and then this shit's so crazy. They're like, they, we don't even need no yeah, alcohol. Yeah, we don't even My favorite was this, uh, Pat Berry took a clip of Rose walking uh, in slow motion and put it to like the sexy saxophone music <laughs> and put it on a loop and then put it on YouTube. <laughs> That's fantastic. And then we're, oh yeah. <laughs> so is that why she put him knocking him out yeah. to wake him up? That yeah. was the payback video? I think, no, I think that was even another one. That was another time. Have you seen that? That was no. hilarious. She puts on a, like a, a 10 ounce boxing glove. Mm-hmm. Goes into the room well, singing, a, yeah, singing a Disney song. Oh, that was because he woke her up. Oh, and that was a previous all, video. Time, time to get yeah. a fave, and then looks at the camera with the boxing glove and knocks <laughs> the shit out of him. <laughs> <laughs> and he just goes, fuck! <laughs> no, that was the first one. He was singing that same song, and he woke her up. 
Oh. Like, I think he, like, poured water on her or something like that. Like, and put it on YouTube. Oh, yeah, that's great. Hey, I got an idea. Let's be one of those prank couples that pranks each other, except for we're going to fight. <laughs> <laughs> that shit escalates. Turns into <laughs> cups of pee and powder. It turns into handcuffs. <laughs> <laughs> it turns into... <laughs> Not the fun kind? Yeah. You got to fucking... You gotta, <laughs> Not the furry handcuffs. <laughs> Not the fun kind? You got to wake her up at the wrong time of the month, dude, with a fucking pot of cold water, and then next thing you know... Shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> so why do you have meetings for six months? Uh, pranks got out of hand. <laughs> pranks got out of hand. Here's your orange vest. Kayla, and your trash picker upper. <laughs> Kayla Coran has really solid uh, striking and really really crisp uh, k- uh, kicks as well. Uh, I I just I think I like Paige Vanzant. She's very well rounded. I just don't think her skill set's quite deep enough yet. She's very young. She's got a ways to go. I'm gonna be taking Coran in this fight. And just she watching could shock the world, man. Yeah, she I'm watching could. these I'm weigh-ins for, it for sure. Rooting for it for sure. Watching these weigh-ins, Kaylin's quite a bit bigger than her. Yeah, definitely. I know she's got reach. Uh. First fight up on. Is this going to be on? Is his last name really Ariola? Yeah, we've talked about this before. <laughs> Preliminary card. His middle name's Harry. Preliminary card going up on Fox Sports 1. We have Yves Edwards going up against Akbar Ariola. Yves Edwards, obviously, we know is hands down one of the greatest veterans that are still in the game. 42 21 and 1. But that's a, he's that's got, a hell of a record, yeah, man. Yeah, that's a lot of fights. 10 and 9 in the UFC. Lately, he's been going down on a little bit of a decline. It's a little sad. Uh, Akbar Ariola is 22 and 8. He's lost his first fight in the UFC. You know, he's a decent grappler um, and, a, and he's a decent wrestler, but his striking is just kind of subpar. I think Yves, being the longtime veteran that he is, he does everything well. I think he's definitely going to be taking this fight. Um, I have seen a decline in his chin recently. He has lost a couple fights where he's gotten knocked out because he's new up and coming guys and kind right. of put him away. I just right. don't think that Ariola is that young and up and coming guy to put away Eves Edwards. Eves Edwards is going to take this fight. I think that might uh, the the youth is, I think is what's going to help Ariola in this. You think it is? I think it might. Yeah. All right, we'll see. James Vick going up against Nick Hine. James Vick is six and zero, two and zero in the UFC. Nick Hine's eleven and one. Won his first fight in the UFC. Uh, James Vick's a pro, pro, former pro boxer who works very well at range. Has really good, really good power. Um, but Hine, man, is a world-class judo fighter who's got amazing strength for his subcompact frame. Uh, the only problem I see with Hine's game right now, uh, other than he's just very judo-heavy, is that when he, he goes to strike, he stops. He's very flat-footed, very plants his plants feet his to feet, strike, yeah. and then kind of moves. That's it's, the judo in him. Yeah, that's, that's the, the judo. judo you can't do that in MMA. You no. need to be able to transition fluidly, and I just think Vic being a boxer, he's going to capitalize on that. Is he it's, related to Michael Vick? No. Okay. No, no. No, we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> He's a white guy, I think. So, um, What's I, that got to do with anything? <laughs> Michael Vick is an African-American colored man. It could be distant cousin. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Adopted cousin, sure. <laughs> so, you're not, so you don't think we have the opportunity to see a boxer step in and get tossed? I, I do. I just think that because Vick uses his range well for MMA, uses his boxing range, he's should be okay. I'm not picking anybody in this fight because it's hard for me to pick. I because I do again. I do think that his judo is going to be a big factor. It's just if he stops to throw strikes, he's going to get hit. Hmm. I got. I'm going to go with uh, Nick Hine on this one. Going to go with Hine? Yeah, because I. Really, I mean, yeah. If he stops, he is going to get hit. But at the same time, uh, if this guy's a boxer, how's his defense going to be against submissions? Right. You know, which is you know, judo is great for throwing, but people seem to forget that there's a lot of submissions in judo too. True. You know. So and and we've seen. I'm not going to say that this guy's boxing is not on point, obviously, right. but at the same time, we've seen what happens to boxers when all of a sudden they're in a grappling match. True. You know? So we'll see what happens. Luke Bar- uh, Barnett going up against Roger Navarez. Navarez, you'll remember he was Patrick Cummins' last fight that Patrick Cummins won. I think we were actually at that That's fight. That's the barista? Yeah, barista boy. Barista we were boy. actually at that fight that happened up here in, uh, was it San Jose? It was down here in San Jose. Uh, he is dropping down from 205. He's a pretty well-rounded fighter, whereas Luke is from the Ultimate Fighter 17. Oh, I remember. That wasn't even a fight. Remember the other guy came in with a full beard, full tan? He didn't yeah. even fight him. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't a fight. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, like, well, it was on short notice. It was two weeks ago. Yeah. So, uh, Luke is from the Ultimate Fighter 17. He's got good flying knees. He's got good counters. He sets a good pace. I probably will be taking him in this fight over Navarez. I just I wasn't impressed in Navarez. Obviously, first loss and first fight in the UFC. Going up against Patrick Cummings. I mean, come on. Yeah. So uh, then your last fight on the prelims is you have Ruslan Magadov going up against Josh Copeland. Both these guys, this is going to be a heavyweight fight that I don't know if I necessarily want to watch. Uh, <laughs> just to get a beer fight? Yeah, you're probably get a beer fight. I mean, Ruslan... Last time you said that, somebody got knocked I out. I know, I know. <laughs> Ruslan is a kickboxer with a wicked left kick. Uh, really, really good left kick. I mean, that's we're talking like Krokop-style left kick. And he throws it to the legs, he throws it to the body, throws it to the head. 
Uh, whereas Josh Copeland is a former RFA champion. None of their champions, none of their fighters have impressed me since coming to the UFC, even though they claim they're not feeder organizations. You're right. You're feeding them shit. <laughs> you have not fed them a single fighter that I've been impressed with You yet. are malnutritioning the yeah, UFC. Yes, yeah. He does have decent hands. He's got good in and out movement from the fights I was able to watch on YouTube. Thanks for having your fights there. Uh, but I will be taking Ruslan in this fight. All right, cool. <laughs> I mean, that's the record that we have with RFA, so... Yeah, I mean, seriously, yeah. like... Uh, then we have your first fight. Handsome Matt Wyman coming off of a two-year layoff. Jesus. Not from injury, but by choice. He just had to take some time to get his head right. And I forgot about some him. Things. <laughs> Going up against Isaac Villiflag, who is one of the funniest motherfuckers on, fa- on Twitter, by the way. He tweets a lot of stuff, and he's pretty funny. So uh, I definitely... I need to get on Twitter more. You need to get on Twitter, man. You're missing everything. <laughs> yeah. However, Isaac Villiflag is coming off of two straight losses. Um, he does like to set a good pace. He does come forward quite a bit. Um, he kind of throws that one, two, three combo and then backs off a little bit. So maybe he needs to, you know, mix it up a little bit. Very good in the clinch. Very durable. Very aggressive. But his defense is a little spotty. Whereas Matt Weinman, I mean, when we did see him fight two years ago, uh, <laughs> he's got a very steady offense. He's got good kicks and punches, especially punches from the pocket. Um, he's good with his standing elbows, and but he's still that grapple at heart. When he gets on the ground, man, he drops bombs. He throws elbows, he throws punches, got a heavy top game, um, and he has really good submissions from the top. I will definitely be taking Matt Wyman as long as he comes from his layoff in the right Without position. the ring rust. Without the ring yeah. rust. That'll be the big it factor to it, watch yeah, for. Yeah, it'd be good to see him back. Yes. You know, really cool. So yes. We'll see what happens with that one. Joseph Benavidez is going up against Dustin Ortiz. Uh, Joseph Benavidez is pretty much your ultimate, uh, what is it, ultimate athlete team, alpha male uh Fighter. I mean, they all do the same thing pretty much yep. well. They they're all but they're striking stout better, yeah. striker or stout wrestlers with you know really good in the scramble. Um, their striking is vastly improved since Bang has been over there helping them strike. He, they've all got a wicked guillotine. It's very lethal. They they've tapped many guys to that. Uh, Benavidez's thing is all about pace. I mean, he has he sets a really really good pace. It's hard for guys to keep up with him. Really hard for guys. One to of the keep most up. tenacious fighters in in the UFC for sure. Really good counters. Uh, but Dustin also has a good pace. He's constantly moving forward. Uh, his striking is improved. He likes to grind guys down in the clinch and try to wear them out. I just don't think he's going to be able to do that to to Benavidez. I think no, the guy's got an endless gas tank. Yeah. 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 So but it's going to be it's going to be an interesting fight. I will be taking Benavidez in this fight. I'm with you. Jared Rochelle is going up against Alex Olenek. Um, this fight to me is is for for a fight in the top ten. Not saying these guys are top ten fighters. I think whoever wins this fight will be given a top ten fighter to fight. To see if they can actually make it. To into see the if they 10. can make it in, yeah, we'll we'll see what happens here. Um, Rolfshot is a three-time All-American from OSU, very explosive wrestler. Uh, his striking is slow, but it does seem to be improving quite a bit. On the mat is where he is an ace. He is definitely going to get this on the ground and take control of Alexi uh, Olenek and definitely pepper him with punches and knees. Um, I mean, I don't know though. Olenek also has a huge, heavy top game when he his takedowns are pretty poor, uh, but when he gets the guy down. He's very heavy. Well, he, he is mean, very heavy and has an arsenal of submissions. His favorite submission is the scarf hold neck crank. I don't know if you ever seen this. It's basically you take a guy's arm, draw it across his his own neck, and choke him with it. I've seen that. <laughs> That's fun. So uh, much like a scarf. Well, this is the thing, <laughs> uh, but though. Jared Rawshaw, being the three time All American, I think he'll have a little bit more uh, in the scramble, a little bit more uh, wrestling chops to be able to put up with Olenek's top game. Well, the question is, is, is Rochel gonna gonna use his wrestling in reverse and keep it from going to the ground to avoid Olenek's uh, submissions, or is he that confident in his wrestling that he's not gonna get submitted, that he's gonna voluntarily take Alexi to where he's comfortable? I think the thing, the thing is, with Olenek, Olenek is good on the ground from top position. As long as he's in control. As long as he's in control. When he's not in control, he's okay. And that's the thing. That's where I think Rollshot will definitely use his wrestling to constantly be in the scramble and constantly being able to move. And again, Land the punches, land the knees, move, land the punches. You know what I mean? Uh, so I, I think I'll be taking a uh, raw shot in this fight. So if, what do you think, honestly, if, if Rochelle uses his wrestling in reverse and keeps it a standing match? It's going to be boring. It's going to be boring. I, I don't think either one of them, their, their standing game is really that good. I mean, Olenek's good in the clinch. He's a grinder in the clinch, but he basically grinds guys down until they wear out, and then he drags them down and gets on top of them oh, okay. and, and gets okay. control. So, uh, But Rochelle, I mean, he, like I said, his striking's improving. So maybe, maybe he'll use, I just think it'd be a boring decision. If he uh, if he gets it, just keeps it standing. I, we'll just, see. It just makes me wonder. About oh yeah, for wa- sure. You know, wanting to go down to the ground with somebody who's so good at submissions. You know, but time will tell. Good old Brad Pickett here, one punch Mickey. <laughs> uh, 
uh, 24 and 9 going against Chico Kamas, who was 14 and 5. Mickey got the name basically because he looks like Brad Pitt from Snatch. He can't have that anymore though. He's got to go to Conor McGregor. Yeah. <laughs> um, basically, that's that's what it comes down to. He he's but the thing is is he's knocked a couple guys out early in his career, but lately all he does is wrestle, and he's got a good wrestling. He's a very good wrestler, very heavy top game. Uh, when he is standing, he likes to spam his overhand right and his right hand just like nonstop. And when he does that, he gets caught with counters. Um, he's got good submissions of his own. However, Chico's pretty much known as being a wrestler and good in the scramble as well. It doesn't seem to have the same finish ability, I think, as Brad Pickett. He likes to grind these guys out, and I think Brad Pickett's a little more active on the ground, going for submissions and, and, and moving around. I'm going to be taking Brad Pickett in this fight. Brad Pickett's got the experience here with with uh, you know over 30 fights. Uh, he's 4-4 four and four in the UFC, though. Uh, so he's you know he's hit I, I, miss like you said he he came out like you know knocking guys out in the beginning yep. and then kind of hasn't been living up to it. I, lately. I'm gonna say he's gonna be gatekeeper status for the division for a long time. Really, you think so? For a long time? Yep. Okay. He'll just be a test for new guys to come in and fight. He'll win a couple, lose a couple, win a couple, get a paycheck, get a paycheck, look like the guy from Snatch. <laughs> Bobby Green Better than looking like a snatch. That's <laughs> true. Bobby Green going know. against Edson Barbosa. Some snatches are good looking. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby Green. Is, I don't think there's any snatches that are really good looking. I think there's just some ones that are really fucking bad looking. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby Green, twenty three and five, going up against Edson Barbosa, who's fourteen and two. Bobby Green now training out with the Diaz brothers. Said it changed his life. Hey, look what it did for Rousey. Yeah, striker with decent wrestling. He's got good angles, and head movement. He tends to stalk his opponents. He's a little slow. Has a good pace, but he kind of stalks his opponents. Throws that jab out there. Very good jab. Uh, Barbosa, we know, is a very aggressive striker. Loves to throw kicks. His leg kick is probably one of the most vicious leg no. kicks in the UFC right now. He whips it. He whips that thing out there. He whips it good. <laughs> um, he does have bad head movement, though, and he has been caught while admiring his own work. He'll throw that leg kick and be like, yeah, I got you. Fuck, oh, damn it, you hit me. Yeah. <laughs> he did that with Cerrone, and he got caught. You know what I mean? He did that with Varner, and he got caught. And, so, and Bobby Green will catch him. I think Bobby Green will catch him. I'll be taking Bobby Green Yeah, Bobby fight. Green, when he fought in Strike Force, was one of those guys who was like, he had you know, Bobby Hood Green coming out, and it was I like, okay, you know, you make jokes and stuff, and he'd win some or lose some or whatever. But obviously, coming over to the UFC and training with the Diaz brothers has definitely made some huge improvements in his game. What do you think about him talking about he might retire after a couple more fights? I don't think he's... He, he, yeah, he, he's just in it for the money. He flat out said he's just in it for the money. He, he'll never fight Nate. He'll never fight Nick. He'll never fight Gil. He's in the, he's in the 155-pound division. He says he has no desire to get a belt. He has a desire to get money and pay and help pay for things for his family. That's all he wants. It's a job. Yeah, but I mean, if you're going to keep winning... I mean, that's what everyone says, dude. You're, what do you get a title shot? He's like, well, if against one of my boys, I'm not going to take it. If it's not against one of my boys, uh, I, this is so hard to swallow for me, man. Really? Because yep. number one, that's you what say, she said. yeah, <laughs> you, you say you're in here for the money, right? Yep. But then, I mean, if he gets a card against one of these guys, that's going to make money. He won't do it. They, I don't know. They they said right when they first started training that they, that's something they won't do. They'll never fight each other. Well, who would he? Fight? I mean, he'd be he fighting. Was, he'd, he'd fight Nate. He'd fight Nate. Yeah, because yeah. he's at one fifty five. Or Gil. Or Gil. And uh, honestly, fighting. I don't think fighting Nate would get that much money anyway. But if you fought Gil, that would be yeah. That'd be a big, big card. So the money. Who knows? The money could be there. I don't see how that all of that's supposed to work. Because Nate says, "I'm happy to be a number two. Yeah. So basically, up, so if happy. Bobby got to three, they would just stay they're one, just two, gonna, three. That's what they're going to do. They'll never want to fight each other. <laughs> they're never going to go anywhere. They're just going to control. It's the like a bad division. episode of Talladega Nights, man. <laughs> hey, I was thinking about winning. Yeah, but if you win, yeah, then, then I don't I win. win. Oh, man. I, I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah, man. This works. <laughs> Shake and bake, Shake and bake. <laughs> Frankie Edgar, 17-4-1, who is 11-4-1 in the UFC, going up against Cub Swanson, who is 21-5, 6-1 in the UFC. Cub Swanson is on a six-fight win streak. Uh, you can check out our interview with him. Uh, we posted it. So wherever you listen to us at, look for the interview with Cub Swanson this week as well. Um, wasn't exactly titillating, but you know, if, you wanna, if you want to listen to an interview, it's that's what it is. <laughs> I think it's pretty good when you, when you guys start talking about Connor. Yeah, yeah. He, he did not like us talking about Connor. Yeah, but but uh, you I'm know, sure he gets is he an idiot? Yes, yes, he is. He is. <laughs> Next question. I don't know, and I and I mean, me, maybe me discrediting his opponent also kind of put it in sit well. Yeah, he him, didn't. But. He didn't sit. He wasn't too happy with that. Well, I still don't understand what this fight is about. I don't get it. This is for the number one contendership spout. No, allegedly. I, really, where whatever. it went south is right at the beginning when you asked him, when you turn 40, will you then he become Bear Swanson? Bear Swanson? It, was it was not funny, happy. man. <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> Cub didn't find it funny. Cub didn't find it funny. But I it thought was it was funny. funny. No, really? well, he said he had contemplated it yeah. before. Yeah. He, that really set the pace for the interview. <laughs> yeah. Immediately, Joey just texted me, this is going to suck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, about halfway through, I'm texting Dodge. <laughs> <laughs> so, comes once on a six-fight win streak. He is dynamic. He is unorthodox with his striking. He likes to throw kind of like these hook 
punches and and weird kind of kicks. He's he's very good though. Mixes yeah. his kicks and strikes well. Very good timing. Very aggressive. He's still very hittable. Um, he's willing to take a couple shots to land his own. I don't know if that's something you want to do with Frankie Edgar, who is all heart, who will constantly come forward. Um, he's good off of his back though. So Frankie does get him down. He does have to watch out for Cubs guillotine. Cub has a pretty wicked guillotine off of his back. Uh, his his defensive wrestling had been improving. Frankie, I mean, one, former 155 champion, came down to fight Jose Aldo, lost that fight in a unanimous decision. Still was a good, pretty good fight. Uh, found his new home here. I mean, yeah, his last fight was against BJ Penn, which he didn't really have to do much for. Um, but, I mean, looking at the Frankie Edgar we started with, the wrestler, to adding the striking game, he's evolved huge. I don't know. He's, he's got a. You just don't like him because he's from Jersey. I don't know. He's just. He's the BJ beater. That's all he is. He's Frankie Edgar's the BJ beater and the Maynard retirer. <laughs> like, I, I just. I. I. I think Cubs want. He's got a good fight. in and out style. He's got good takedowns. He seems like he's impossible to hold down. I haven't found one person that's able to hold him down yet, and make him pay on the ground. He's good in the scramble. He's constantly able to get back to his feet. Uh, he's definitely a bigger fighter at 145. I think he's still going to win this fight. I think he's going to do it with high volume, high pace, and top control. Okay, let me ask you, if Edgar loses, where does he go from here? He's still fighting anybody in the top five. Yeah? Of the 145-pound division. You got Ricardo Lamas, he can fight. You got, uh, you have him fight Conor McGregor. Have him fight, you know, there's still guys in the in the, in the 145-pound division he can fight. It's not Jose Aldo. If he wins, should he fight Jose Aldo again right away? It's kind of tough to say. Cub Swanson wins, he should probably fight Jose Aldo to win right away. I mean, this is these are the two top guys in the, in the 145-pound division right now. They really are. I, I guess it's just crazy to me to think that, that Frankie Edgar is one of the top guys in the division right now. I just don't see it, man. I mean, he's the BJ beater. That's about it to me. Because he beat him twice, that's that's it? I mean, aside from that, really, he, I don't think that he's done a whole hell of a lot. I don't like thinking about it. I just don't, I don't feel like, I don't feel like it's there. I mean, Frank Edgar can fight Chad Mendes. You all right with that fight? Uh, Dustin Poirier? Ricardo Lamas? Frank Edgar and Chad Mendes would be actually interesting. Have him fight Clay Guida. <laughs> That'd be interesting, too. I, and now I, I really would like to see Lamas Mendez. Yeah, I would really like to see that fight as well. Um, I, like I said, if if Cub Swanson wins this fight, I think he should get a title shot over Conor McGregor. And try to find. Well, the I agree with that too. I mean, you got to look at look at where Conor McGregor's ranked and look at where Cub Swanson's ranked. Yeah. Right. Uh, I mean, I will agree. Conor McGregor is going to sell more tickets at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I mean, looking at Frankie's record, yeah, he lost twice to Benson Henderson. Uh. He lost twice to Bendo, once to Aldo. He got a draw against Gray Maynard, you know. And he, yeah, but that we watched that draw at my house live. You were there in my house for that. We both agree that it was bullshit. That's true. That's true. No, that's, <laughs> that's a good point. And I mean, then, and then he knocked out Gray Maynard, and then he knocked beat, him the fuck out. He beat BJ Penn three times, and then before that, like his his fights were against. No nah, man, they, you got some good fights. Yeah, I mean, he fought breaks, Sean, breaks into the UFC against Tyson Griffin. All right, Sean as a, Shirk on as his a way wrestler, out. comes out you know Mark Bocek, Spencer Fisher, both hard fights for him. Hermes Franco is a, a decent fight. Matt Veach, I don't know why the fuck that was on there, but, you know. Sean Shirk was a tough fight for him. The original Gray Maynard fight was good. Uh, the two BJs, the first one, I thought BJ Penn should have won that fight. I really do. Second fight, he definitely beat BJ Penn yeah. to retain that belt. Goes against Gray Maynard. We both talked about this before. We thought he should have won that fight. Went to a draw. Took forever for them to come around and actually get, I mean, from January to October is when they finally fought. Knocks him the fuck out. Loses to Benson, which I thought was bullshit, and lost his title. Lost to him again, which I still thought was bullshit, to not get his title back. I mean, even there was a split decision on that one. Lose to Jose Aldo. He lost to Jose Aldo pretty bad. <laughs> uh, beat Charles Oliveira. Beat BJ Penn, which was kind of a gimme fight. And now he's going up against Cub Swanson. I just really, I feel like he came in at a bad time, man, where he's, where he's got these, uh, you know, he was he was the young guy coming up. Yeah. But there was a lot of guys coming up behind him, like the Bendos and all those and yep. stuff like that. Yep. And sure, he was he was good enough to beat the guys who were on their way out, like BJ Penn, like mm-hmm. Sean Shirk, stuff like that. But these, the, I he, thought he beat Benson. That's the one, the only one I don't agree with. Well, I mean, that's, that, that's fine. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, like, I feel like he's he's in this weird position of of, of a group of fighters where where the guys who who are younger than him, that are they're hungrier than him, they are definitely better than him. Okay. I, I think that guys. That's why I think Cub Swanson's going to win this one. Fe- featherweight, like I said, is, is a pretty pretty deep pool right now of guys and like I said we got Chad Mendez Cub Swanson Frankie Edgar Ricardo Lamas Conor McGregor Dustin Poirier Dennis Bermudez Dennis Siver Nick Lentz all these guys Jeremy Stevens, Clay Guido all these guys even Dubronx Charles Oliveira you know what I mean like all these guys are pretty pretty tenacious pretty pretty good fighters that are out there that are in the top yeah. 10 I could see him fighting any one of those and putting up a good fight I could see him winning most of those fights 
Uh, whereas Cub Swanson, I honestly don't see him winning most of those fights. I mean, we can look at his record. Uh, against Frankie, I just... Uh, Would a win over Frankie change your mind? Yes, hands down. Again, if if he beats Frankie Edgar, he definitely deserves a title shot. And I think he definitely... I mean, he, he took out Charles Oliveira, who's down at the bottom of the, of the top ten. Right. Dustin Poirier, who just lost to Conor McGregor, which Dustin Poirier was supposed to be the next big thing. When he first lost to Cubs once, and I was like, all right, it was a decision on that. But then Conor McGregor took him out in the first round. Obviously, Dustin Poirier has definitely lost a little bit of his shine. So according to this, if if uh, McGregor beats Siver, he then has to fight Jeremy Stevens. He's going down the ranking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, beat Dennis Siver. Now, when he beat Dennis Siver, Dennis Siver, I've never thought was an amazing fighter. I really don't. He's a good kickboxer. Yeah. He's short. He's compact. He's a Nazi. He's not a Nazi. He's German. <laughs> he's a mid card kind of. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Preliminary fighter. Jeremy Stevens. I don't even think was should have been a fight. Really, I don't think Jeremy Stevens was this like looking big. looking at their records, comparing their records. You yeah. know what? Frankie Edgar does have a, a more impressive yeah. resume. He if was, if Cub Swanson wins, though, I will hands down give it to him. He's better than Frankie. Frankie's definitely been knocked down a peg in my in my opinion. Yeah, this will be this will be a good fight. Maybe you're right. I'm biased. I, I, I'm biased on my jersey hate. I think you are. I think this is a <laughs> really good fight for the featherweight division. No, looking at I think it's paper, a really I, good fight. I, I I didn't give Frankie Edgar enough credit. His resume is really impressive. But again, I think he came up at the same time like when. Like, he was retiring all these guys who were ready to be retired anyway. You know? All right. Yeah. So he had a good time to come up. Uh, but, yeah, tomorrow will be a good test for him. So make sure you guys check it out. It's UFC 180. No, it's Ultimate Fight Night 57. 57, yeah. live and free. On Fox Sports 1. Make sure you check out our Facebook page. We're going to try to find this uh, this huge blood splatter. Uh, so you can see that one if you go to Middle Easy. It should be on there. All right. And uh, we have any sponsors right now? Just just keep checking out AmericanaMMA.org. Americana MMA. Americana what? Amer- AmericanaMMA.org <laughs> AmericanaMMA.org So check them out if you need some fight apparel They got you covered And of course make sure you subscribe Split Decision on uh, Spreaker, Stitcher, SoundCloud, iTunes Get us on our website official uh, It's the SplitDecisionMMA.com So check that one out On Facebook it is Split Decision MMA Podcast And on Instagram and Twitter it is SD underscore MMA From the Rula Family Inc. Studios It is Bueller and Dodge saying have a good night And we'll see you twice Thanks for being part of the longest show ever Peace. No. My, my back hurts. <laughs> it's over an hour.